Okay, so we're going to go through 13 commands um, that are useful for troubleshooting or general system administration. So we're going to use a command line, a command prompt. Um, so to do this, um, we'll go to the start bar and um, type in CMD. I want to right click on this and run as administrator. Um, so that's sort of popped up on the bottom screen. So I'm going to move that in so you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to go through, like I said, 13 of these tasks. I'm going to start with the slow ones and I'll work, work my way to the quicker ones and give a brief explanation of each one. So the first one is SFC scan now, which is to check for any integrity, integrity violations in the file system. So um, if, you, if you think you've got a virus or malware or something like that, this would be a, a useful tool to run. And that's going to take some time. Depending on your file system, it could take up to sort of 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to open up another command um, in the meantime, just because you know you can have multiple command prompts open. Um, and again, we didn't we'll have that one running um, separately. So next one's going to be check disk. Um, so you can check certain volumes and, and you know it tells you the file system to so our Windows PC so the file systems NTFS um, this is basically checking for any errors or any you know data problems um, within the system so if, if you've maybe got a bad blocks or bad sectors on the drive this could pick that up could correct it if you're lucky um, if not um, you might be going down to the to the shop to buy a new new SSD or a hard drive if you're if you're old school. Um, but that's you know that's run pretty quick. You know it's a new new drive. Um, it's a new um, installation of Windows, so it, it has run pretty quick. Well, like I say you can do it per volume and speed things up. So you want to do it to C drive, C drive or D drive, etc. Um, and you can also do it to external USBs and things like that. Okay, so that's that one. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to system. Um, info. So this is going to show a mix of software and hardware that's on this piece or on this laptop. So it gives you the host name, OS name, OS version, build, registered owner. That's me. Um, manufacturer is Dell. Latitude E5420. It's a laptop, old laptop. Um, BIOS version, you know, 2013, so, you know, very old, I didn't even realise it was that old myself. Um, you know, but a good tool if you're working remotely and you want to see if a particular PC has got the latest BIOS version. Um, it's a very quick way of finding out that information. So, um, you know, it shows what memory is in the machine, um, hot fixes that have been installed, network card information, etc. So again, another very useful tool to use. Um, let's do the next one. So power uh, CFG energy. Okay, so this is going to show sort of power consumption um, on the um, on this particular machine. Now, this is useful for a laptop um, because um, you can see any improvements that can be made to, to save battery life. Um, or you know do your bit for the environment such as sleep mode um you know if the power's plugged in does it go into sleep if it's on battery itself how long does it go into sleep and sleep etc it will give recommendations it'll give warnings etc and it should um create a html file um shortly that we can see all the information on there so we'll just wait for that to come through um, it won't take long, so it's saying it's going to take 60 seconds. Um, should be any time now, should pop populate that information. Um, here we go, it's coming soon. Okay, so that's where the, the sort of file um, the file is located. So if we go into the C drive, and your report up. Okay, so here we go. So here's the HTML version. You know, just give us quite a few different errors here. There's a power policy on display time on battery plugged in. So we've got nothing set currently. So we're not doing our bit for the um, the environment, and you know potentially we're 
kill our battery over time so it does also give a sort of short breakdown of what it's found so 14 errors 21 warnings and 25 information or um, you know statements so again another useful tool if you if you want to sort of create the, the perfect power efficient machine and again it's more useful on batteries than on, on pc so in the meantime this um, integrity scanner has, has finished and it's not um, produced any integrity violations so you know that's that's good to know that's good that my clean install of windows 10 is, is okay and i've not currently got any viruses or anything like that so i'm going to close that down because it's it's just in the way at the moment so i've done quite a few so far the slow ones let's go into the, some quick ones so arp is mapping um, ip addresses to mac addresses of devices i've connected to or i am connected to so we've got the router default gateway and the, and the physical address the mac address of them, them devices so again another useful diagnostic tool or information tool next one is going to be um, get mac so this is getting mac address information so that's showing um, the network card information of this pc or this laptop that i'm on so i've got two there i've got um, one that's got information so i'm, I'm on a wi-fi network so i'm going to assume that the top one is a wi-fi card and the bottom one is disconnected i have not currently got um, an ethernet cable plugged in so that's going to be that one now if i want to be sure i can go a bit a step further and put this information into a table and that is getting mac fo um, table slash v okay so again it gives you more information here so we've got wi-fi intel intel centrino wi-fi card with a physical address and the ethernet adapts with broadcom with a physical address um, so again, if you had loads of virtual machines running or you had multiple cards in the server, it would give you a lot more information than I've got here. Okay, the next one is just a simple host name, just gives you the PC name. Um, again, if you're working remotely, you can map that PC name against the inventory list to make sure you're, you're fully aware of the hardware or software that should be installed in a particular machine. Okay, on to the next one. So we're moving through pretty nicely at the moment. So we've got IP config. Just gives a breakdown of a summary of IP addresses um, that we're currently working with. So IP address of the machine is 192.168.0.12, subnet mask, and default gateway, generally the router address. So if we want to get some more information with that one, we'll go IP config slash all, and that gives a lot more information. It gives you information about the um, physical address or MAC address, um, network card information, um, the date and time of the lease. Um, so when the lease expires, oh, I will need to be the IP address re renewed, um, which will be provided by DHCP from the router. Um, um, and then, yeah, there's just plenty of information here about the different network cards and network services running. So again, could take that a, a bit step further. And then if I wanted to release the IP address, or you know, get a new I type release. Now I'm not going to do that because it's going to kill, kill the network, uh, kill the video. Um, but you'd also type in renew after that. So you release the IP address and renew the IP address. So again, another good troubleshooting tool um, if, you're, if you're having network problems. Okay, on to the next one. We've got NS lookup www.google.com. So um, this is my, my router, Sky router. That's the default gateway. 192.168.0.1, and this is basically mapping Google.com to an IP address of that server. So 142.250.200.4 is the um, IP version four address of that server. Um, so that's a you know a useful tool if you're having if you want to look up that information for whatever reason. So let's go to the next one. Go to task list. So this gives you a list of all the um, current um, um, programs running running in the background, and the, and the right hand column is the memory usage. So if you've got you know the system running slow, um, you can bring up all that information. You can also identify any malicious programs running that can be you know 
putting a burden on your system, put burden on your memory usage. So let's put this into practice. Let's open just let's open a notepad. Okay, so we've got notepad open. Notepad's not currently in this list because it's not open, so we can see the no notepad. That's good. So let's run it again. Um, let's go task list. Okay, so we've got notepad.exe here. So let's kill that task. So this one is task kill. And then slash I am. And then we need to write um, actually I am slash. Um, and then it's um, we need to write the actual file name out. Okay, I've got the wrong way around. I did it right first time. Okay, so it's terminated that program, so as you see it disappeared in the background there. And, and then if I run it again, put task list. Um, notepad's not running there. Okay, so this is like task manager, but again, if you're working with servers, you might not have a simple you know, mouse to hand, um, you might be working remotely or, or whatever, you might be in a data center. So command line tools are, are, are more useful than, you know, point and click on a, on a graphical user interface like the task manager. Okay, so let's go to our next one, netstat-a. So it's giving all a list of all active TCP and UDP connections. Um, and this is going to go on for, for quite some time. Again, if you've got loads of um, applications that are, are, are internet intensive or use internet resource, it's going to go for it, go yeah run for a long time so um, it's good for identifying you know again rogue programs that might be used utilizing an internet resource so if you just press ctrl c and cancel that um, next one we'll go trace so we've got to the network diagnostic ones here so trace rt stands for trace root and then we'll go google Okay, so this is going to show the hops. So a hops is a router um, address between me typing this into my laptop and it get into google.com. So it says it's going to do it over a maximum of 30 hops. Usually we get there in sort of less than 10, but let's see how far this goes on. So remember, you know, I've got to connect to my internal router and then the router's got the, the ISP side to to go out into the wide area network so seven hops again if you want to sort of see where problems might lie in a network you'll, you'll notice the speed difference between hops um, and if you've got um, a large network or you want to see particular where a router might be misconfigured it'll, it'll get to that certain point um, and not go any further Okay, so finally, just the last one, which should be quick, and probably the one that we, we know the most of is just ping google.com. So that's just seeing if a host is reachable. Google.com is reachable. So again, if you know an IP address of a machine on your network, that is where you would type in the IP address, or you can do it to a, a domain like Google. Okay, so that's our 13 um, command lines for system administration, you know, basic system administration or basic troubleshooting.